Hello everybody, welcome to this week's video, or should I say this year's video. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for such a great 2023. Um, I think we got a lot done, um, especially with your help. And um, it's that time of year again when um, I talk about the commercial details of this free software job. I've got my tie on, got my things set up. So this video will contain discussions of earnings and labor. If that sort of stuff makes you uncomfortable, then skip this video. We'll be talking about program, programming and graphics arts uh, in next week's video. So um, each year I talk about um, how much money I've made during this last year on doing this free software project. And I do this in order to communicate to my fellow free software developers about how possible or impossible it is to make a living doing free software like this. Um, this is important because uh, there are generally two accepted ways of contributing to free software. One is you can uh, get a job with a large corporation, like say your Googles, your IBMs and so on, and then you hope that your code is made open source. Um, or you can donate your time or you can be a hobbyist and uh, and therefore the, basically your your real job quote unquote real job is is something else and you you know maybe you have some spare time to con contribute to the greater good let's say uh, or just stuff that you're interested in depending upon what motivates you um, but these two ways of working with free software they don't always produce the best results and uh, what this pro project here is that I've been doing with Inkscape is trying to prove a way of uh, earning a living from serving users directly. Uh, each of these videos that I make, you'll notice that I talk about the fact that this uh, project is about serving individual users. And that's entirely the point because uh, while um, free software's main benefits that you can see is the fact that it doesn't attempt to abuse users, right? It's generally safer, it's generally more secure, it tends not to ask you for monthly subscriptions or lock you out of your data or do any of those other, uh, should we say, like problematic ways that software developers have these days of earning money. And the reason for that is because um, you guys, the users, are supposed to be the owners. And the problem is, is that the owners of the software, especially for, for user-facing software that's nothing to do with a corporation, don't really have their hands on the levers to be able to control what gets programmed and what doesn't. All right? And what I've been doing is I've been offering my services as a software contractor, as a programmer who has the skills. And I'm offering it, instead of offering it to a corporation, which would be admittedly slightly easier, I'm offering it directly to the general public. And the idea is that we pool the resources together. And you guys tell me what it is that you think Inkscape should do, what you think needs to be fixed, and how we can move for, for, forwards. Um, this is because I really, really, really want you guys to be in the driving seat, because I think that you guys know what you need best, right? Better than a pro programmer, better than a volunteer, better than a hobbyist, and certainly better than the likes of Google, right? Okay, so we've talked about uh, open source and about why I try to be honest about what it is that I've been uh, earning. Um, let's talk about the numbers. So this year, or should I say last year, because I'm rec recording this in 2024, uh, was a very, very good year. And I'm just going to pull up the right diagram. So as you can see, I started in 2020, and this blue line is my previous commercial contracts. Basically, that's non-Inkscape related work. And then uh, these all, all three of these other colors are various ways of earning money by doing Inkscape stuff. Um, the uh, the, the yellow is Patreon and LibrePay. That's basically the money that I get directly from users. This, um, is that pink or salmon? I don't know, or maybe it's red. Uh, that line is commercial con contracts that I got for developing Inkscape. This is where a company would co come to me and they would say, uh, we'd like Inkscape to be able to do some, some something. We don't want to join your Patreon and become a part of the, pool, the general pool. We want to uh, pay you directly to program some stuff. 
And then this green new slice, which happened this year, 2023, um, is uh, Inkscape itself. So the Inkscape charity has been building up its reserves for quite some time. And we have been trying to find a way of paying developers for doing the work that the charity needs, i.e. what is in the public interest. And this year was the first year that we were able to do that. Um, and as you can see, all three of these things together has actually amassed to at least this year to be, I would say, an er earning. That is a sustainable uh, way of living for a um, senior developer. Yeah, it's not it's not what you would earn if you were employed by some corporation. Not at all. Pro programmers earn more, more than this. But I think if, if you were to consider it from a purely like labor perspective, this is a livable way uh, in the U in, in the USA. Um, unfortunately, because it's contracting, this isn't stable. Like I know that y different years are going to be uh, differently able. We're going to see if we can continue this level next year, hopefully with a similar kind of mix. I kind of like this, um, you know, one third, one third, one third mix. And um, I actually have, you can actually see how close the mix is between um, direct from users, which is slightly more, uh, the Inkscape charity work, which was, which was actually mostly the uh, the the a bug accelerator pro program. Basically, I spent twenty twenty three doing a lot of bug fixing for uh, both the one point three release itself and for the one point three point one release, um, and some and some of the management surrounding that. So my my great thanks goes out to Jonathan uh, specifically for organizing a lot of that work inside of In Inkscape to be able to pay developers. Um, and f finally, the Inkscape contracts, which is, uh, as I said, the comm commercial arm. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to continue growing the Patreon. I do know that um, one of my biggest patrons is leaving me uh, this this year, in 2024. So I'm probably going to need to create a campaign to continue to do the CMYK color work um, to basically raise more money so I can spend more time on it. Um, but news about that will come in the future. Okay, so that's the specific num n numbers. Um, I think it's worth trying to talk about uh, Inkscape itself. Since we've talked about the charity work, I can close this so, it, so we don't get confused. Um, so what we've been t talking about up to now is just me, Martin, a programmer who uh, is paid for by you guys to work on Inkscape. But now let's talk about the Inkscape charity itself, because I also sit on the PLC, the Project Leadership Committee for the project. And uh, between myself and six other people, um, we discuss and decide upon what Inkscape charity funds should be spent on and how we are trying to raise money for the charity. So this year has been particularly uh, effective, I would say, in terms of spending money, um, and less effective at raising money. Um, and in fact, I think I forgot to pull up the chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to Inkscape.org budget. Hmm. I may or may not decide to cut cut this out. Inkscape. Okay, let's pull that in. Okay, so this is, uh, is that big enough? So this is Inkscape's publicly accessible project budget page on our website. And it shows you all of the money that we've spent on software in, in, in engineering month by month, and all of the donations that we've managed to get in. And you can also see our total bu budget. And you can see how over many, many, many years, we were sort of like raising money, but not really spending a lot of it. And then this year, we've suddenly spent a, a, a lot more. Um, and that's great to see. Mostly mostly what we've spent our money on is the GTK4 project. Um, and from this, you can see that uh, over the entire year of 2023, we spent uh, about $102,000 on software engineering and a further uh, ten to $15,000 on conferences and transport and I think some mugs and some stickers um, and we raised only about 56,000 in fact there's, a, there's another chart that shows uh, donations yes so you can see for 2022 we actually had a, a superb donations year we earned $139,000 in, in that 
since single year in donations, right? And in 2023, that's now 58,000. Um, this means that while Inkscape hasn't been asking for money actively, um, we were reaching that point where we were we were getting enough money in where we could effectively pay developers consistently and that we'd have always have enough money in reserves to be able to continue to do do the work uh, no matter what it it required and in fact it did t take us more years than i was expecting to be able to actually get to this point um so the question for inkscape next year in 2024 is uh, do we continue to spend the same amount of money that we did in 2023? Is is 2023 an anomaly because we were doing GTK3, uh, GTK4 work, sorry? Um, and if if we are going to continue to spend this amount of money on doing things like development, do we need to start raising money or fundraising in a much more aggressive way? Um, so this is certainly a question. I, I don't know if we have the kinds of people who do fundraising effectively a part of the Inkscape project today. Um, so the secondary question is, do we spend time uh, trying to attract volunteers or people who want to work with the Inkscape pro project to be able to do fundraisers? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, because Inkscape has so far succeeded in being a very loosely organized group, and so we don't tend to actively uh, recruit, um, except for where we're actually spending money on on people. Um, but this is where you guys can come in because you guys should be able to say what you think Inkscape should do, right? We're a charity. We're trying to do the public good. Uh, we do try and make decisions about what we think is in the best in, in interests of the public good when it comes to developing free software and managing the Inkscape project as a whole. Um, but that doesn't mean that your views shouldn't be taken into account and that um, you guys probably have opinions about where you think uh, we should Inkscape grow the charity further and start doing more development work? Or do you think that we should steady the ship and start spending within the amount of money that we're able to raise uh, from donations? Okay, so that's about it for this New Year's special. Um, thank you for joining me again for a video where I talk about basic, basically how we can change the free and open source world into being a more uh, interesting and complicated, but also more uh, livable and survivable uh, ecosystem, right? Where we create an in industry where programmers are paid and users get what they actually want. Um, I will see you next week to talk about actual programming on Inkscape. And um, thank you. Uh, if you have questions about why I'm sitting in a recliner, the recliner isn't part of the bit. Uh, the glasses are a part of the bit. The tie and 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 uh, shirt is a part of the bit. The recliner is here because it, it it's it, um it's where our Christmas tree is currently, and the Christmas tree is not down yet. So uh, hopefully I'll be back in the regular chair next week, but we'll see. My daughter is actually saying that I shouldn't uh, I shouldn't swap the chairs back too quickly. She's been enjoying having uh, the extra space in the living room, so maybe I'll get stuck with this chair, but we'll see. <laughs>